Calculus BC, we're looking at one of the most requested problems on the station activity, number 15, the accumulation function. And uh, of course, g of x is right here. This is the graph of f. Let's take a look at part a. When we're going to find g of 4, everywhere where we see an x, we're going to replace it with the 4. So we're going to integrate from negative 3 to 4 of this function f right here. And of course, I hope it's crystal clear why we're doing that. Like I said, wherever you have an x, right here, whatever you're substituting in, you're going to have to substitute in over here. So that, by the way, is the heart of an accumulation function. Now, this integral, of course, then is net area. And we can say, can we find the net area in this figure? And, and certainly we can. You know, negative 3 is right over here, and 2 is actually this way, and then here's 3 and here's 4. I hope you can see that we're going to have a triangle that's above the x-axis. That's going to be right here. We can find that area, just like you did a couple years ago in geometry. And then, of course, you're also going to have a triangle right in here as well. This is below the x-axis. Now, the cool thing is the area of a triangle, in either case, it's always the same thing. It's going to be one-half base times height. So you'd say, well, what's this base from negative 3 to negative 2? Well, from negative 3 to negative 2, if you were to just subtract 2 minus negative 3, you'd get 5 your base would be 5. How tall is it? Well, we can see right up here, this is up at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, uh, you know, that's half of 20, which is actually a positive 10. So we've got our positive 10 right here, but there's more to the story. There's also this blue triangle here. And we can say from 2 to 4, would be a base of 2. You can see the two bars, but it's just as easy to subtract, 4 minus 2. But what about this height here? Well, that's, you know, 4. You could even do a negative 4. Uh, so I'm going to do 1 half base times height. Half of uh, 2 is just going to cancel. You'll have a 4, but that right there is really a negative 4, isn't it? So a 10 and this negative 4, that just equals 6. So g of 4 is equal to 6. Okay, and of course we could be asked to find all different types of scenarios. Uh, but we're going to revisit over here and just say for part b, we'd like to know on what open intervals is the graph of g both increasing and concave down. So tell you what, I'm just going to, you know, maybe erase some of this just briefly to point out a couple of things. If g of x is equal to the integral from negative 3 to x of f of t dt, what we need to know, g is increasing when g prime of x is greater than 0. That's by definition. So I hope you know g prime of x. In this case, g prime of x is just going to be f of x. We've done quite a bit of that. So what I'm really interested in is where is this f of x greater than 0? Uh, guys, you're really trying to discover then where is this curve going to be above the x-axis and you can see you're above the x-axis between negative 5 and 2. Okay? So we're looking between negative 5 and 2. So I can even write that off to the side. Now that's not going to be our final answer. So we can say g is increasing, uh, you know, really on a closed interval from negative 5 to 2. Uh, but we're going to answer with an open because we also want to know where g is concave down. There's more to this story. So your concave down when your second derivative, g double prime of x is f prime of x, 
your concave down when your second derivative is negative. So g is concave down. when g double prime is less than zero. So I'm interested where f prime is less than zero. So I'm only looking up on top here, but f prime would be the tangent line slopes. So I'm interested where f is above the x-axis, but I want f prime to have negative tangent line slopes. That's going to be here and here. So what we're going to write for our final answer is simply this. We're going to say uh, on the interval from negative 5 to negative 3 unioned with 0 to 2 and we're going to say that uh, this right here uh, g is increasing and concave down on this interval because because they're asking for a reason the reason is f uh, I'm sorry g prime of x is greater than 0 that's the increasing part and g double prime that's your concavity uh, is less than zero. So g prime is greater than zero, g double prime is less than zero.